If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People November 4, 2008. Hello, my name is Bob Gatz, and I have a luthier shop in central Minnesota. We're going to rehair a violin bow in my shop today. We're going to cut the amount of hair that I need for a violin bow. I just, by this time, I've rehaired so many bows that I just kind of have a feel for how many hairs to put in a violin bow. Now we're going to widen them out a little bit so they won't slip out of the knot we're going to be tying. And now we're going to put a little beeswax on the string so we can control it a little better. We're going to take apart the frog of the violin bow. We're going to take out the old plug. We have turned over the ends of the hair. Now this is my particular method of rehairing bows. There are several methods and this is the one I learned years ago. Like I said about since 1979 I think that was the first thing I tried to do is rehair my own violin bow. I need three hands to tie these knots or I use my mouth to tie the knot. Once I went to the dentist and he was working on a chipped tooth and I said, you gotta flatten that tooth a little bit because I need it to rehair violin bows. And he said, oh, figure something else out. Don't use your teeth. And I said, no, there's no other way to do it. <laughs> so, so he did. <laughs> now we're gonna turn the rest of the hairs under. This string that I use for uh, tying the violin bow hair is a very strong upholstery string or a linen thread or something like that that uh, won't break when I tie a tight knot. Part of the reason I uh, got into repairing instruments is that I have always enjoyed repairing anything rather than throwing it away. And uh, I have been in bands played music in different uh, orchestras and choruses for since I was a kid and uh, couldn't find anybody to rehair my bow around here. There weren't music programs at the time. So the repairing of, of instruments has just been kind of an automatic interest because I do enjoy the challenge of each individual instrument. Every instrument, the problem that it has is, is unique and so I have to try to figure out how I'm going to repair it or if I need a special jig to repair this instrument or a special tool. And so I've accumulated drawers and tons full of jigs and tools and I really enjoy taking an instrument that I find in uh, whatever condition it's in, going through it and doing everything that I think it needs to have done to it and make it play again. All right, now we've like prepared the inside of the frog to receive the new hair. Got this little pocket cleaned out. Now I take a piece of wood. This happens to be willow that I uh, recycled from an old piano, probably over a hundred year old piano. It's a piece of uh, that greenish colored willow, dry, and uh, that's what I use to make the plugs. Now I take this wide chisel that I bought years ago at a, at a junk store for about two dollars. It's a Eric Antenberg from Eskilstuna, Sweden chisel, and uh, 
it was used to open paint cans and things like that. Well, I've reconditioned it, and it is some of the best steel that uh, I've ever found in a chisel. And that's what I use to rehair the bow. Some people use knives, some people use small chisels, but I have gotten used to this, this thing, and uh, so I can chop myself some piece of blank wood. Now I start roughing this in, and what I'm trying to do is trying to match the shape, the angles, the, the angle of the pocket slants in on both sides and slants like this on, on both ends. So I'm going to try to reproduce that same, and they're all different, every, every bow is different. Now I take the underside of this plug and I carve out a little bit of wood on both sides. And this is gonna make a space for the knot to go into. And then I take a file and smooth this out and run and I round this edge here so that when I'm pushing it in, when I'm pushing it in with the hair, it's going to just kind of, it's not gonna be a sharp edge, it'll be a rounded edge there. Now we're going to heat up a mixture of violin rosin and a little bit of beeswax to uh, kind of a, a glue that isn't really a glue. It comes out of the, cleans up easier out of the pocket. So I, I put the plug in to the mixture because I think it's going to be absorbed into the wood fibers and make it less susceptible to humidity so that like in this weather in the winter time it's not going to dry out and pop out and i also impregnate the end of the bow hair with the same substance put the hair in first add the plug quickly before it dries if everything's right, this should slide right down in there, which it did. <laughs> we push a little firm pressure so that it, before, while the rosin and the beeswax is setting up. Now I take this chisel, this old dentist tool, and I clean up anything that might have come out. And uh, I made the plug wider than what it needed to be to fit in so now I can trim this plug off cutting towards the hair so if I slip I'm going to be taking the hair out so now we're going to clean up the pocket afterwards with the old dentist chisel here great steel in those things and cutting towards the hair you have to just stop before you get to it Clean that out, clean it up. And that's what it's going to, I'll show you what that looks like. That's what the, it's going to look like in there. And this keeps the hair from pulling out. Now, the other thing I do that some people do, some people don't, is I will I take the end of the string that had the beeswax on it and I tie a couple knots here just to keep this together while I put the frog back together it's going to keep the hair from getting under the bow slide now this is a bow slide this will slide in on top of the hair okay and I put my initial here just for the heck of it I put the date so I'll do seven 16, so if I uh, rehair this bow again, I can tell the people when I rehaired it, or I can see if I rehaired it. Now we have the hair coming out of the ferrule, and we've got a, this space here that we have to make a wedge out of the same material. We're going to take and we're gonna fit that same distance there. Now we're taking distribute the hair evenly across the 
ferro. If you get too much hair on one side or the other, it'll pull more on one side than the other, which will warp the bow eventually over time. Well, that's done now. I was rehairing a pretty expensive bow once for this uh, friend of mine. It was a gold mounted bow. He was watching me rehair it, nervous because it was his baby, you know. And uh, I started, I started pounding, <laughs> pounding like this, and he let out a little scream and ran out the door, you know. <laughs> Turned out just fine. So now I score the spreader wedge with my knife. And I take and I cut down, cut that off, I keep doing that. Keep scoring it. Getting close here. Okay. Get down to a point. where I can just uh, bend that over, off it comes. Take a little bit of glue, run on there, wipe it off right away. And what that does is it uh, is absorbed into the pores of the spreader wedge and keeps it from being affected by the humidity also. So now we're going to place the frog with the hair on the bow stick. I will put this all the way to the front, tighten it up. I have a certain amount of turns now when this starts adjusting. So now we're going to turn this around. And now we start going, we comb the hair. Got a fine tooth comb. So now we're going to just get any snags or short hairs out of the hair. Just begin with here. And uh, so now we're going to make the plug for this end. So now we've got the plug fit. It's slightly larger. I've got a space here for to allow for the hair. I'm going to take that back out and carve out the underside of the plug again. All right, now I've got a cup of room temperature water. And now we're going to wet the hair slightly. Bring it out. Now we're gonna comb it out. Okay, so now this is the most vital point here. We're gonna cut the hair at the right length for a humid summer day. <laughs> That's that. Now, clamp this down again. I'm holding this between my thumb and finger. Very important to keep that flat. Now, what I uh, usually do here is I'll do the flame again to blunt the ends of the hair. So now this is another part that's by feel. What I'm trying to do here now is take this width and reduce it down as to the smallest width that I can. So the way I do that is to I'll pull and let up pressure on, on my left hand, pull with the right hand straight, and then I will push, pinch the end here. And I let up with my left hand slightly, just letting the hair slide over towards itself, not too far so it crosses over, but just slightly to the point to where I could feel the hair sliding together without crossing over. So now I've got a point that I can tie a knot around. <laughs> Three times around, I go again, tight. One more time, okay. I reach in, bring that string out. Now here's where I need the flat spot on my on that tooth to <laughs> tie this knot.
cut off the excess thread. Give it one more little. Those ends off. Okay, now I'm still, I'm holding with this hand, keeping the hair from going over itself. I pinch here, pull and pinch. Turn this over like this, holding it still. <laughs> Flip this over. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna impregnate this plug with the beeswax and the end of the hair. Insert the hair, the plug. Push down now with the pressure on the plug. And uh, that's that, we clean this up. I can take my big chisel and cut it off. Now we put the hair together, put the frog, a little bit of beeswax and uh, a uh, petroleum of Vaseline that I've mixed together to, to use as a lubricant down here on the bow screw. And then we tighten it up for the first time. And uh, now we comb it out. Once in a while there's uh, a uh, hair that uh, wasn't quite long enough to get in the knot. And we kind of line them up again here. There's one right there. Take that, cut it off. And that's it. Bow is rehaired. Let it dry and uh, keep an eye on it so it doesn't get too tight while it's drying. And looks good. I know we're gonna, that's it, we're gonna hang it up and keep an eye on it so it doesn't get too tight while it's drying, but that'll, that'll uh, dry out and uh, be able to uh, play the violin. <laughs> if you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.